then go dra- do drag queen story hour. Say, well, we're just, you know, pristine and pure. It's like, no, you're not. You're getting a sexual kick from dressing up in women's clothing. And let's not bloody well forget it. And you can't even say that now, but every clinician worth his salt knew that for decades. And then there's another subpopulation. And those are usually gender non-conforming kids. And, you know, like a conservative skeptic might say there's no such thing. It's like, no, there, there is. So your typical gender non-conforming kid would be feminine boy or a masculine girl who's high in trade openness, so has kind of a mutable identity, who's also high in neuroticism. And there's lots of kids like that. And so they don't fit in that well with their peer group. You know, they're tomboy girls or feminine boys. And then if you track a lot of them, some of them develop body dysmorphia. They're not very happy with themselves at puberty because they don't fit in. But Zucker showed very clearly, he ran the transgender treatment clinic at CAMH in Toronto for decades, and he was one of the world's leading authorities in terms of publication. I think he was the editor of the lead journal for years. They just took him out in Canada, fired him and disgraced him, and he battled on the lawsuit front for like 10 years and was eventually vindicated, but he didn't have a political bone in his body. He was a clinician through and through, you know. He wasn't playing political games, documenting autogynephilia. That was just clinical reality. Now it's, it's become verboten to even suggest such a thing. Oh, there's nothing sexual about this. It's like, yeah, right. You're dressing up in lingerie before your mirror at home, tucking your dick between your legs, imagining you have a vagina for a sexual kick. Oh, there's nothing sexual about that. Yeah, right. Bloody absolute liars. Now, then you have the kids who don't fit in on the gender front. That's a different pathway. But with them... If you leave them alone, so do no harm, leave them alone, 90% of them accept their body, their sex, by age 18 or 19, and 80% of them are gay. So what that also means is, and the gay community is going to wake up to this sooner or later, is that (laughs) most of the kids being sterilized and mutilated are gay, 80% of them. So... I don't see how the LGBT alliance is going to hold up under that sort of reality. So, yeah, that's for sure, man. What a crazy situation. And here, here, let's add something equally ugly to it. Since we haven't gone far enough yet. So here, we'll do a little bit of arithmetic. So, a while back, Disney executive mentioned on video, this is when Florida went after Disney, was all when this was happening. She came out and said, I think she was head of domestic programming for Disney. She said, well, I have two children, five and seven. One is trans and the other is pansexual. And I just thought mathematically right away, it's like the chance you have a trans kid is one in 3,000. That's not a very high chance. And let's say the chance that you have a pansexual kid is the same, whatever pansexual means. I don't even know how to calculate those odds. But whatever that is, is rarer than trans because no one ever even heard about it until five years ago. So the joint probability that you have a trans kid and a pansexual kid is one in nine million. 